Hello, uh, welcome to uh, EPG Patsala. This is the production of coursework for architecture for postgraduate students. And this uh, particular uh, uh, course, like we will be discussing on biomimicry of uh, second level as part of uh, sustainable and green building design. Learning objective for this particular uh, level will be discussing on analogies uh, between nature and technology. So, how do we link uh, the nature and technology? What are the principles of biomimicry which you can able to take into? And then when you are designing, so what are the approaches which you can take? And generally like we have two broad up approaches like we can able to classify. And then how do we incorporate the basic nine principles of nature into design? This is the broad objective of your learning for this particular module. And uh, the first one as uh, we can discuss here in broadly the analogies between nature and technology and we can see here how the concept of analogy can be taken into courses as we know that like it is going to be the natural system in one side and what is the technical system which we are going to develop these two are going to be in both the sides. So, what we need to do is like when we are trying to develop a new system for to solve the human problem. So, we need to take the technical system into consideration first. We need to understand what exactly the technical system require and then what we need to do is we need to look into a biological system which can be similar to that. For example, I told you I gave you example in the module 1 the biological system which are similar to the technical system. For example, I can give you an example the biological system can be the lotus leaf, the technical system can be self cleaning surfaces. So, to design a self cleaning surface, we are looking for a biological system which can be similar of its nature. What we need to do is at first level, we need to compare the form between these two, so that we need to be sure whether we have selected the right biological system to take inspiration or to imitate its technique or it is its form or its material or its process. So, we need to ensure ourselves yes are we selected the right biological system to imitate our technical system. Then what we are doing is we are doing this separately we are doing the technical system in a present state. So, what is the technical system in a present state for example, again I am trying to take the example of the lotus leaf or we can even take a building for example a normal building skin we are doing just as an independent agency because like we are doing a wall as a skin of the building let us say take an example and then we are trying to put glass and other things. So, so we are designing and when we are discussing what is the present state of that particular technical system and then from that we are trying to understand we are trying to list it out these are all the problems these are all the issues which needs to be addressed. For example, when you are designing the wall for a particular building or we are calling this as a skin for a particular building, we are seeing that what are the issues which are related to the wall or the external facade of the building. One is that like the aesthetics, second one is like you no know, the energy efficiency, third one is like how do you let in the light without any heat. So, all those things like are considered or we are trying to list it out this requirements which can give you the catalog for development. So, that will give you what is the present state and then how this can be you know what are the problem which can be addressed. So, that will give you the broad picture of the technical system and then similarly we are also trying to take the biological system which are very closer to this particular technical system and then what is its present form. So, what is the present condition of that particular biological system, how does that system has been evolved, how it has been living, how it has been surviving, how it is generating energy etcetera etcetera. So, you can understand what is the present state of that particular biological system. Then projection onto technical requirement catalog which is similar to your technical system. So, to solve any particular design from this present state of the biological system you are developing okay these are all the possible ways in which we can able to integrate 
these two so that we can able to get a proper one that is what when it comes to the requirement of cataract development projections into technical requirement catalog we are trying to compare both and then we are arriving a common which is the technical production designed with biological or biomimetic approach. So, this is how normally the biomimicry design has been done. So, whenever you want to develop any new design with an inspiration from a biological system, you take the technical system separately and then understand it in a present situation how it has been and then you list out what are the requirement which needs to be addressed, how you can take the help of the biological system to address those issues that we need to take it separately and then you take a biological system which is very closer to that that is what like without you no know, doing a comparison if you do the study then if you find in the later stage like it is not going to helpful to you. So, at the stage 1 itself you need to compare these two systems in such way that you are taking the right biological system for getting the input for your technical system and then understand how the biological system is in a present position, understand its limitations, understand the possibilities and then project how the technical requirements can be brought in as a catalog and then we can do a combination or a comparison of both and then finally, we can arrive the technical production design with biomimetic approach. So, this is how the biomimetic design has been worked out. So, in the following slide we will be discussing how this can be taken into this is the premature stage or in a broader concept which can explain to you is yes, how we can able to link the design and then how we can take the biological system and how we can put these two together. So, that at the end of the day you are getting a design which is inspired by any biomimetic design. These are all the principles which you can see in the earlier uh, module I explained to you the nature can be used in three categories one is nature can be used as a mentor, it can be used as a model, it can be also used as a measure. So, you can use the nature only as a mentor. So, you are not able to see beyond certain limits there are certain principles of the nature which you cannot be able to understand. So, what you have to do is like you cannot get into that like you just have to because it will take some more time for the scientist to get an understanding of what really happening. So, we just have to take that as nature as a mentor there are certain principles which can which you can able to directly relate. So, you can take that as a model and then you can also use the natural process as a measure. You can clearly see here the three process one is design nature as a model. So, here you can see that like now you have to create something new for when and where and then the process is an integration that is like you have to discover and then you have to do an abstract. So, that like you can get why you need to do is like you can create more ideas, you can get more novel ideas likely life friendly ideas you can also get and then pre tested and proven ideas you can get and beautiful ideas also you can get as well as you can also take your elegant ideas. So, that you can use nature as a model. So, you can create nature as a model which is a loop again as I told you you have to discover the natural model and then you have to abstract it because you cannot use it directly. So, you have to abstract it in, a, in that uh, whatever explanation I gave you as a natural analogy and then how that abstract can be used that you can use so that like you can get more of such ideas. And then nature as a measure I told you you have to use when it, when it is coming to the measuring there are two major components which are coming into that one is testing and another one is like the results of the testing has to be audited. So, that like you can be sure yes this process of evaluation is correct. So, whenever like there is this is the general industrial principles like people are doing it because like whenever you develop a new technique or whenever you develop a new technology you are putting that technology into a testing mode and then you are generating some data those data has to be audited and then you are confirming or reassuring that yes it is a proven technique. The same way like we are trying to do when we are using the nature as a measuring tool by doing this like you can go for the pretest for success stories like you can be sure yes by testing the nature as a success story 
identifies the missed uh, limits and opportunities by doing the testing and auditing that that will also give you a broad picture what are the areas you missed out which are the areas you are scoring high so by doing the testing and auditing by generating uh, numerical data you are also benefiting one is like you are sure about what you are doing at the same time you also can get the positive and negative aspect of your process so positive in the sense like what are the areas you scored more so that you can be confident and the negative in the sense what are the areas you have to rework what are the areas like no which are weaker you just have to rework then only the closing loop which will be continue and then you also need to keep on asking questions that like what would nature do then only like you can complete the process of nature as a measuring process and then the last one the principle of the biomimicry can be used as designed for nature as a mentor as i told you certain principles of the nature you may not be able to understand it is going beyond your limit or beyond the scope of understanding at the present scenario for example nobody knows how the spider is generating the web with a minimum material which the minimum material which i'm talking about it is a waste which has been generated from the spider's body just a saliva and then some amount of waste from the air it can able to generate that web which i told you which is like no stronger than your your steel for a given area nobody can able to understand the humans are trying to imitate that they could able to achieve only 1/10 of that strength which we are seeing the bulletproof jackets the dupan company which they are doing it which is the bulletproof jacket which is again imitated from the spider uh, web but we can we can go very closer to that we cannot imitate no 100% with that in those cases like we are taking the nature as a mentor so we can see that the changes of the mindset broadens uh, solution spaces it also increases likelihood needs will be met and deepens the understanding of the context because like we need to understand as a mentor so you can follow that so that you can get the understanding of that sustainability understanding of that product becomes broader so that you can think the issues in a larger level rather than addressing the design issues only in a shorter level so these are the areas in which like you can see that the biomimicry can be integrated into the approach of your design so in broader sense as i told you the biomimicry can be used nature as a model nature as a measure and nature as a mentor these are the three uh, broader principles and uh, we can see that nature as a mentor as i told you certain principles like you can see here the images certain images which is beyond your 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 knowledge so or it may take some more time for the scientist to understand certain things so we are using the nature as a as a mentor in some of those areas nature as a model as i told you only the processing system like probably you, you can uh, use nature as a model and then this is the honey bee hives see that the hexagonal structures used the least material to create the lattice of cells with the minimal surfaces a uh, large surface area and the largest possible volume because when we look at this nature as a measure the spa, the honey bees are spending half of their life to generate the material to build the structure if at all they are doing that so they need to make sure which is the shape they can go so that they can use the least material so that they can spend the rest of the life for collecting the honeys and which can be stored in this particular surface so they are ending up with this hexagonal form which can give them the least material for a given volume of spaces so whether the architects can follow that whether the architects can use such things similar when they create their spaces this is what the outcome outcome of my thesis so i'm using this as a tool to measure the efficiency of my design or the material which are used in my design products and this can be broadly applied in building structural stability we all know that the hexagonal forms are the best uh, form for structural stability even today the structural engineers are calling the honeycomb uh, uh, structures which can be used for the better uh, stability of the structure and also minimizing the material as i told you the concept of this form the hexagonal forms can minimize the material for a given volume of spaces this can be used nature as a measure so apart from that we can also see uh, three basic 
principles of uh, biomimicry or which is in the biological sources how this can be brought in. The first one is life creates conditions conducive to life. So, we need to understand life automatically creates condition which is conducive to you. So, nobody can say that like the life is like you no know, a struggle or whatever. So, all those conditions which are very very conducive for you to live because life adapts and evolves. So, the process I told you it is 2.8 billions of years like the process which has been like you no know, adapts to the conditions like the polar bear adapts its its condition to the climate which is available in that area. The desert uh, you no know, bees are adapting you no know, or the camels are adapting the condition to that particular area. So, it life automatically adapts to that particular area and it, it, it evolves. So, this is the first principles in which like you can see that the life creates conditions conducive uh, to life as well as life adapts and evolves. So, you can also uh, see here at this subject to the limit and boundaries. So, optimize rather than maximize. So, this is one of the conditions in which like you can able to see your life because life automatically sees an optimization rather than maximization. You can see all those biological sources everywhere you can see this optimization which has been effectively applied. Because of that optimization they could be able to see the maximum process which can be used by the other people. So, multifunctional design fits form to the function recycle all the materials that comes broadly under this classification. And then the next one is the leverages of interdependencies. So, in natural system nothing is isolated everything is interdependent everything is a closed loop. So, we can also see that like how this can be brought in to your design which which is like fastest cooperative relationship only through cooperation you can able to get the relationship because it is it is an interdependency which which works out and self organization though we are saying it is interdependency everything is a self organized entity it can survive on its own at the same time it also has to survive with its surrounding with its ecology with its bonding with its uh, neighbors. So, those things uh, are broadly classified here you can see here at this again water base. So, we all uh, know that and we can see that uh, begin uh, uh, manufacturing which is like life friendly materials. So, all those uh, natural materials are life friendly materials. that is the reason why it could able to be recycled it could able to be used because the waste of one natural material is going to be the resource for another uh, natural material. So, life friendly materials are only produced in uh, nature and then water based uh, chemistry again all those chemistry whatever you know the chemicals like which you are using in, in natural system are only water based chemistry. So, that like it is harmless and self assembly system again because of the natural based because of the water based chemistry it is a self assembly you do not require too much of heat and beat to because in the artificial system what we are doing is when we wanted to manufacture steel like we are using too much of heat and too much of beating and then we are wasting so much of energy and so much of material. So, in in the nature nothing like this uh, happening which is like uh, the self assembly which is not at all uh, which is going to be very very vital here and then natural systems are all resilient uh, uh, kind of process. So, which means like it is again redundant and then decentralized and distributed and then diverse. So, you can see that in nature no similar things are happening which is diverse, but again it is it is the same. So, and then integrate cycling process this is what I told you the waste of one is going to be the resource for the next which means like there is a process always like you no, know, you have your cycle which is going to be integrated. So, that comes earth is a state of dynamic and non equilibrium. So, which which integrates cross pollinations and mutation. So, all these things are happening which means like it is going to be a complete cycle locally attuned and responsive. So, which means like certain things are designed only for that particular local areas which means I told you the polar bear cannot survive in this area it is tuned and designed only for that particular area. The species the plants everything has been designed only for the locally attuned and it is going to respond. So, this is also been practiced in sustainable design that whenever somebody is talking about any new material whenever somebody is talking about any new landscape design they are always suggesting that like give a local species so that it can survive it requires a least maintenance it will also 
merge with the environment. It does not require any special attention for that. So, which means like locally attuned and responsive will give you the resourceful and opportunistic. So, that like you can be simple, it can be integrated, it can be free of energy which can require least maintenance for all these things. So, this can give you the basic principles, the first principles of your life which means like life adapts and evolve, life creates conditions conducive to life. And then the next principle we can see here is life create conditions conducive to life, this I have explained to you uh, broadly. Here we are talking about optimization rather than maximizing. So, always like you can see all these images like you know which are living in different different conditions, which are different in size, which different uh, requirements for survival. But all these things like you can see that like the basic principle which are working here is it is optimizing rather than the maximizing. It does not you know maximize, it is just optimizing all the resources, whatever resources they have, whatever you know whether their skin, their food, their environment or the surrounding everything has been taken care of this word called optimizing rather than maximizing. Using multifunctional design, this is what like you know, we keep on telling in natural system no component or none of the system is an isolated system which is meant only for one particular aspect. It is used for various aspects that is what we are talking about using multifunctional design fitting form to the function again always like you no know, this Mies van der Rohe also did mention in his statement that form follows function. So, most of the architects or the designers are forgetting that you no know, they are trying to add so many things which are not at all required for that, but in natural system you are you are 100 percent sure that all the forms are related to the function. You can see that the giraffe or, or deer or whatever entire the form is purely related to the function of that particular component and then recycling all the material which is the basis for the natural system. The difference between the natural system and the artificial system, natural system nothing goes as waste An artificial system most of the things are waste. In natural system we are seeing optimization rather than maximizing, but it is the other way around in the artificial system because of that what is happening like you do not see that uniqueness, you are seeing everything similar. Whereas, in natural system because the optimization process is happening, you can see that the leaves of a particular tree everything may look similar, but it is different even the identical twins are not identical. The mother can able to you know clearly you know identify who is who. So, in nature if two things are similar it is not nature but in artificial if two things are not similar then it is a rejected one. So, you can see the difference between these two that gives you a clear picture that life creates conditions conducive to life which is directly emphasizing the fact of optimization rather than maximizing. And then the locally attuned and responsive this is what I told you the human bone which is self healing and this is what I told you the desert uh, 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 beetle which can generate water in a dry air. So, we all knew that nothing happens now uh, you do not even hear of you know the water in the desert area, but there are species you know which are survive in this uh, cactus which survives in the desert. This kind of beetles which are survive only Namibian uh, beetle this we they call it as this is survive only in in, in the desert because we know that like what is the amount of you no know, water which can be available in a desert area, but a plenty amount of air is available, but this particular species is generating water from the air, so that it can survive. And this is what I told you simple structure it is not complicated nature it may look complicated, but it is simple right. So, you can see that this is again self assembly the seashells the water based chemistry all these things are produced only from the sea water all your all your your materials required for this is produced only from the sea water. So, it is it is a water based chemistry which is again used as a self assembly and you can also see here this calcium whatever is there in the human bone which again used for self assembly and self healing that is why 
the principle of the life which again applicable in this biomimicry which is locally attuned and responsive. So, you do not require any external forces to come and help them. It automatically adjusts itself so that like it can survive for a longer time. right? So, all these things again will give you the third principle of uh, life which is called locally attuned and responsive. And based on this like you know, the biological uh, uh, design principles called biomimetics which has been taken into two design approaches. So, we can see here from this picture left hand side and right hand side it is broadly classified as biology to design and design to biology. So, you can approach the biomimetics in both the ways that is biology to design means like no you discover a natural model first and then abstract the design of the natural model and then do a brainstorming session with the biologist or a botanist or, or a zoologist or anthropologist or whoever is involved in that. So, that like they can give more idea because they are having more understanding about that particular species, they are understanding more about that architecture of that particular natural uh, component. So, what you need to do is you are trying to understand certain biological principles first and then you are trying to do an abstract of that biological system and then you are trying to catch hold of people who are working on that particular biological system. If it is a botanical species then you have to discuss and you have to involve the botanist as a major role he plays a major role because he knows much about that and then you need to develop a new material or natural strategy which we are calling it as evolution that is like the person who is trying to do something and then the specialist. So, both are trying to jointly emulate certain natural strategies and then they have to evaluate whether it is workable and then it is coming as a design. This is too difficult for somebody to understand because like you cannot that, that is the reason why I told you nature can become a mentor in this area because the certain principles of the nature you cannot able to understand you cannot able to map it you cannot able to understand how exactly it is working right. I told you the spider web of you know uh, uh, spider web cannot be imitated exactly as it is, but you can understand to a, a limit right. So, that is the reason why using this technique we have very limited amount of outputs are there in the market today, but scientists are working people are working on this particular aspect that is biology to design. Next one is like pretty simple because here you just have to identify a challenge this is what the analogy comes into picture. So, you have a particular challenge and then you are trying to look a biological system which is somewhere closer to that this this works out for most of the cases. So, you identify the real challenge and then develop a design brief and then trying to look for a natural product which are similar to that and then trying to abstract it and then emulate it and then evaluate. So, that like you get something closer to that right. So, the termite mound is there ok fine. So, that is there at one side, but what you need to do is like you need to do a passive cooling technique for your building fine that is what your main agenda. There are many ways of doing passive cooling technique. So, you started looking for various biological system in and around and then you are trying to discover the termite mounds are closer to that and then you are trying to pick up that you are trying to abstract because that is in a different scale it is used in a different species right it is used for a different purpose. So, it cannot be used the same here. So, it has to be abstracted to the building level and then the scale and then the application or whether you can use it in only one particular area or you can use it in a largest area. But the difference between the challenge to biology and then biology to design is that this one you can use it either part of the design or the whole you can do any one. So, that is the reason why this becomes a very successful model than this because in this model you have to use the entire process as it is you have to use the entire process of the lotus leaf to the design of your your paint. So, that is a lovely example of this that is biology to design because people have discovered the lotus leaf and then they are abstracted it and then they brought in the biologist and then they developed the system and then they have applied it. But whereas, here 
it is like a termite mount to your passive thing. So, you need to achieve a passive design technique and then you are trying to understand there are so many ways of doing it and one of the ways how the termites are doing, you are picking up the technique and then only for that you are applying. Otherwise, like the material of the termite and then how the termite builds the structure, you are not no, interested in. But what is the principle behind that passive cooling technique? Can you able to abstract only that and then you are trying to put it in your building? That is what makes a lot of sense. So, that is the reason why from the product to biology becomes very, very viable because many people are using it because the advantage is as I told you, it can be used as a part to the building or as a whole. So, you can take whichever way you want it. So, in a, in a broader sense, the biology to design also termed as top down, which means like you define the problem first and then search for the biological analogy, identification of appropriate uh, principles, abstraction and detachment from biological model, testing, analysis and feedback and design solution. So, this is the best example. For example, Mercedes Benz like when they wanted to develop a car. So, what they have done is like they have taken the box, uh, box fish and then they have imitated the, the same thing. Like you can see that the design is not evolved from the car. That car design they do not want to take it as they want it, but you can see the similarity of the shape of the box fish and then the car design as exactly the same, because they are forced to follow the entire system of this biological principle of this box fish to the next level of abstractions and then do a basic skeleton and then it has to be come out as a final design. So, this is what we call it as a top down model, which means like you are going from a biological system to the product. This is also another reason this is not been successful model. You do not find the Mercedes Benz car of this model in the in the market, because it is a very peculiar design, which they just want to try something which can be workable. right? So, that is also another reason it has not been effectively used. As I told you, biology to design is very difficult to imitate. But Whereas, the next technique, the design to biology is very, very useful. This is called the bottom up technique, which means like you are trying to understand the biological research or it is going the other way around. That is, you are getting the design solution and then you are taking the technical implementation, abstraction and understanding of the principle. So, all these things can give you, you can you can see here you now how this has been addressed here in the, in the lotus star inspired paint of uh, self cleaning. It can also take in the other way around the couple of examples also I can quote here. The walls that can breathe which can be something similar to the human skin, because human skin we know that like now human skin also can breathe at the same time it can also adjust its you know, condition according to the, the climate, because like you can also survive in a cold climate, you can also survive in a hot, you can also survive yourself into the rainy day. So, in a, in a broader classification you can see this is the human skin and then the human skin model has been worked out with that same principle they could able to get the skin of the building which is like the external facade of the building. So, that it can breathe, it can also function something similar to your, your normal skin. Exterior layer capable of preventing or filtering direct sunlight while allowing the air flow to pass. So, this is what like most of the people wanted. Most of the people wanted the air to flow into the building. So, you will have a larger opening. The moment you go for a larger opening, what will happen? You will also invite more amount of uh, heat into it, but you do not want the heat to come into the building. At the same time, you wanted more amount of air to pass through, so that you can your building can survive with less amount of uh, energy. So, that is what like has been worked out taking inspiration from the human skin. So, the middle layer act as a thermal insulation. So, you can see that the middle layer which acts as a thermal insulation layer, then it uh, cools the air temperature by evaporative cooling and receives air flow. So, that like you can take in the sea you can see that the internal layer aims at controlling the air flow. So, the human skin also control the air flow like sometime like in the cold climate you need to control the air flow of of you no know, 
air penetrating inside your skin otherwise like you will be in trouble. So, that happens like you know automatically the, the human skin expands and then opens depends upon the climate. Only one thing is it is cooling, second thing is that it is also filtering the amount of air which can comes come in. The same way the, the building skin also has been worked out here. Levels of the biomimicry. So, how you can apply the concept of the biomimicry here? The levels of the biomimicry here I am trying to mention here is the biomimicry can be applied in any design field in these three areas. One is the organism level and another one is the behavior, another one is the ecosystem. So, what is the organism level the biomimicry can be applied and then whether the biomimicry can be applied only with respect to the behavioral aspect of the biological sources or it cannot be a indigenous kind of effort, it has to be part of a ecosystem. So, are you going to combine these two into whether it is going to be an organism, behavior or ecosystem. If it is possible, you can link all these three things together or you can also take this in a identical manner and you can also work out. And five additional sub levels also can be worked out that is like in terms of the form, in terms of the material in terms of construction, in terms of process, in terms of function. For example, in an organism level, how the form can be related, how the material can be related to the organism, how the construction can be related to the organism, how the process also can be linked with the organism, how the function also can be related to the organism. The same way, how the form is also related to the behavior of the biomimicry or the natural system, how the material is helping the behavioral aspect how the construction is helping with respect to the behavioral aspect, how the process is helping with respect to the behavioral aspect and how the function is helping with respect to the behavioral. Similarly, how the form can help with respect to adjust itself as part of the ecosystem as well as the material whether it is part of the ecosystem. So, that the waste of one becomes the resource for the other and then the construction. So, it can be mutually helping each other it is part of the ecosystem and then the process which is part of the ecosystem and function. So, whenever we design we can take up this in two axis that is in both x axis and y axis. The orga organism like if you are working out separately how the organism can be applied into the sub levels that is with respect to the form, material, construction, process and function. So, while doing an abstraction of a natural system you this will be directly helpful for you to link and then to do the abstraction. So, that will be giving you a broad perspective how you can able to work the biomimicry for the abstraction of your, your building or any design process. So, the principles I told you this nine principles of the nature which should be applied to the design. So, here I am, I am, I am trying to emphasize a little more because we know that nature is based for everything. So, everything we can take it from the nature can be taken as a model and can be taken as a measuring tool, it can be also used as a mentor. But whenever any designer or any product designer whether it may be an architect or it may be a, a product designer or it may be a textile designer or it may be anyone who is trying to do a design, he has to check back what is the principle of the nature, can you bring any of those principles, if possible you can bring all those nine or at least you should try to maximize the principles of the nature as part of your design process. The first one is as simple as that nature runs on sunlight, which means like for everything in this world the sunlight is the major resource for energy that nobody can deny that. So, you need to make sure the nature runs only on sunlight, can your building can take inspiration from that, can your building runs on sunlight rather than taking any artificial you no know, energy to run. So, you can think of you know, how you can able to integrate the sun into a building or how you can keep the sun away from your building, so that you can get only the light not the heat. So, the rest is left to the individuals to decide. The next one is nature uses only the energy it needs, it does not consume more energy, but you can you can very well think about this in, in any building does all our building does all our products uses the energy only it requires nobody cares, nobody bother about it or we do not have accountability to choose 
this is the only energy it requires. So, I am going to provide that. So, but you can take it from the nature that it uses only the energy it needs. The next one is nature fits form to the function. You can see all the natural elements are directly related to the form and function, which is what Miss Wonder again says that like form follows function. So, that you can avoid all those unnecessary ornamentation, unnecessary kind of decorations and things like that. So, nature fits form to the function. So, all the natural components are directly related to the form and function. Nature recycles everything, nothing goes waste or nothing has been kept as away from the loop. So, you can see that in the nature everything is a loop, which means like everything has been recycled, it has been brought back to the mother earth. So, that it is a continuous process. That is also one of the reason why it is survived for more than this 2.8 billion years. right? So, next one is nature rewards cooperation. Automatically, this, this is very, very evident. You only when you cooperate with nature, it rewards. When you are going against it, we have to pay for it. So, nature rewards uh, cooperation and nature banks on diversity. So, we know that like you no know, in natural system, no similar things are happening. I told you, if two similar things are there, and it is not a natural process, right? But that is the beauty of the nature; it banks on the diversity of its 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 material, its survival, its process. Nature demands local expertise. This is very very essential. As a designer, we need because in the global world now we think everything is possible. Whatever is designed in U.S., whatever has been designed. In, in some other countries, it is still you no know, can be applicable here. It, we are simply aping the, the western concept, but that is not possible in a natural system. A nature demands local expertise. No, it requires only for that particular area, you can use that material, that type of design, that type of food, that type of culture. Everything is linked with the local expertise. You that is the reason why. You see the different people with different attitude, different language, different ways of dressing, different ways of taking food, everything related to their their association with the nature because that demands the local expertise. Now they cannot digest any other food, right? So this is very, very evident because like you have to go for this, that is like nature demands local expertise. So you have to use what is contextual, what is related in that particular area you need to you know, link it and then nature curbs excess from within. So, if you go against it, then you pay for it. So, nature curbs excessive excess uh, uh, from within. So, these are all the nine principles in which like you, know, you can sorry, uh, the nature taps the power of uh, limits. So, this is the last uh, principle. So, you can understand that all these nine principles of the nature whether you can able to bring this in your design, possibly all the nine principles it will be great, but at least like we can keep in our mind that yes, these are all the basic principles in which nature is working. So, at the maximum level I can able to bring in certain aspects of that if not all the nine principles. So, then we are directly relating our design to sustainable we are solving all our human problems into the biological uh, principles. I would like to conclude whatever uh, we have discussed so far uh, here. Uh, the first one is like what is the analogies between nature and technology? How do we look nature and technology as an isolation? Then how we can able to combine these two so that we can get you now uh, the ideal design at the end of the day? And principles of the biomimicry again, as I told you how the biomimicry can be used, other the, the life principles can be used as a biomimicry and then two design approaches as I told you, one is like from biology to design and another one is a design to biology and levels of biology like we see that what are the levels of bio, uh, biomimicry and sub levels of biomimicry. So, that like you can have a matrix, so that it can be worked out and finally, how the nine basic principles of the nature can be applied into your design. So, that you can target yourself, you can set a target whether you can get all the nine principles or you can able to maximize what is the possible level which you can able to 
achieved it. So, I would like to thank uh, you for your uh, patience. Uh, so, hope this will be uh, useful to you. Thanks, Namurjulama. Thank you very much. So, we will discuss the, fur uh, the further uh, information in the module 3. Thank you.